She wanted to be there looking you in the face and saying, eat me, eat me. Go ahead and dip your spoon in me. I'm out there. Mm -hmm. Every home cook has that one dish they are more confident in than any other. That one dish that they know can truly blend in with the pros or can it? Today, one imposter chef takes on two incredibly professional mythical chefs to see if they got what it takes to graduate from amateur status. So everybody, please join me in welcoming today's competitor, actor, comedian, podcaster, big buff nerd, Iffy Wadiwe. Yeah. Oh God, oh God. no, not the table. Yeah. Uh, Ivy, you're the first competitor to be significantly bigger, stronger, and funnier than both of us. Mm. The only thing we have is cooking. Yeah, and unfortunately, uh, the challenge isn't to beat food up, so. <laughs> fair enough, fair so, enough. Yeah, so we're gonna see. Ivy, tell the people what you're making. What is our dish that we're battling over today? Oh man, you know one thing I like to make, they say it's a labor of love, and I definitely do, because if you make this, I mean, you know what time it is. I'm making risotto. I love that so much, man. You know, if you see someone with that wrist work for 30 minutes, you're like, all right, I guess, I guess I'll spend the night. You people, know? people think <laughs> this is. All right, if you so we're all gonna make our best version of risotto, and then a judge is going to blind taste test it to see if they can catch the imposter chef. I really love that if you chose risotto because this is a very chefy dish. This is a dish that is super technique driven. If you are not layering flavors at every single point in the cooking process, the judge is going to know. So very, very bold move. But like you said, it's also a labor of love. And I think his came from a little bit of a place of horniness, which that's perfectly okay. You know, food sometimes is that as well. But I wanted to do a little demonstration of the love that I have for Ify, not in that way, but you know, I don't know, a little bit. Point is, one of the last times Ify and I hang out, we went to a Ramstein concert. So I'm calling this black metal risotto. We're doing a squid ink risotto right here. We're gonna add some lobster stock to it and I, it's gonna look really brutal. I mean, this is just gonna be an absolute horror show. We're getting a whole lot of butter toasting in the pan. I wanna start browning it just a little bit and then we are going to get a hard, hard, hard toast on that rice. To me, like that is one of the things that makes risotto really incredible is when you get those deep, dark, burnished flavors from the beginning. As for what if he's making, I have no idea. I don't know, I feel like he's gonna go, I feel like he's a classic man. You know, I think he's gonna try and show like his softer, more technique driven side. And then Lily's gonna come through with, um, I don't know, something that's like really chefy, but also kind of ironic, you know? Like it's a play on a really nostalgic dish, um, but like, you know, it's gonna have like 15 garnishes on it. You know? All right, so we're gonna add our shallots here. Again, pretty classic shallot, garlic, and chili combination. I think chili goes really, really well. Butter is almost browning. It's nice and foamy, which is exactly what I want. We're almost treating these aromatics wok style. We're just gonna get them like slightly toasted in that really hot fat. And then boom, rice is going right there. We're gonna toast that rice, keep it moving. That is the key to risotto right here. Risotto theory. So it is, again, super, super technique heavy. Uh, what you have to do, you take a ladle, you ladle in less than a cup of stock at a time. You keep stirring the risotto around. It's actually going to extract the starch. And the starch is what creates that creaminess effect, but there's no dairy product in it other than that butter that you initially started with. Adding dairy to risotto is a strict no that nobody should ever do. And I don't think any chef would ever add dairy to a risotto because that'd be crazy, it'd be sacrilegious. We're gonna take some of my namesake wine, not to brag, but yes, I have Instagram DM'd with the Josh Wine account and I said, hey, cool name, man. And they said, you too. We're gonna add a little splash of Pinot Gris. So that little splash of wine, that's gonna add your acid. Again, risotto is a super, super rich dish. You get all that starch, a little bit of fat. You need the acid to counter it, especially with seafood. We're gonna add some other acid in there later. We got some preserved lemon going on. Beautiful, the wine is cooked off. You never want that raw alcohol flavor in your dish. It's an idea that people think is like really cute. Like, oh, leave a little bit of that raw wine flavor in there. And then it just kind of, I don't know, it just tastes like backwash at a bar, like a drink in the bar rag. I'm adding in a single ladle of stock to the pan. I don't want it to get too crowded. That way, when I stir it around, the rice actually can get that starch agitated out of it. And now I'm adding in squid ink. I want this risotto to be jet black. I want it to be Vanta black. I want it to suck the light and souls out of all that surround it. This is gonna be incredible. I'm actually gonna take some of the squid bodies and I'm gonna cook it in its own ink too. Uh, what you got, it's like super metal. It's like um, Kronos eating his own son. This risotto is looking beautiful. Look at that jet black color. And hey, if you love risotto, 
you're gonna love me and Nicole's podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, now on YouTube. If you go to youtube.com slash a, at a hot dog is a sandwich, you know, the way that people find things on YouTube is typing the URL in directly. That's www.youtube.com slash at, that's the, what do they call the symbol? The at symbol, a hot dog is a sandwich. And Nicole and I have videos on there, which is very cool. Nicole, how many times have we talked about risotto? Four times. Check it out. If you love risotto, check out a hot dog sandwich on YouTube right now. All right, so the risotto's done. If it gets a little uh, stodgy, we're gonna add a little bit of stock to it. We're gonna cook up our squid really quick. I want like a nice little meaty garnish on top of there. And so we're just gonna add a hefty amount of olive oil to a pan right here. We're gonna do like a quick two minute saute on this squid. We're gonna do some tentacles and some of the bodies, some of those nice rings and drop them in. Little bit of sizzle. We're gonna hit it with a tiny bit of garlic. Give it a nice little saute. Again, the squid's gonna go super quick. I'm gonna take the risotto, and you always wanna plate black foods on a jet black plate. <laughs> that way, the color contrast really pops. Look at that. Maggie, are, is this even showing up on camera, or is this like Vanta black? I'm just gonna finish the squid while it's hot with a lot of preserved lemon, and squid ink, so I want everything to be black on this plate. And now I'm gonna add on some squid pieces, really trying to assemble this to look like a nightmarish hellscape, something that your sleep paralysis demon would make. And then we're going to simply garnish with chili threads. This is the number one export of Kazakhstan. All right, a little bit, hold, hold on, just a little bit of preserved lemon. I want like a little bit of color on the plate, a little bit of color on the plate. And horrifying, fantastic, there we go. Here we have our black metal risotto. This is risotto nero di frutti di mare. Bravo, Giada di Laurentiis. Ah, piacere. Um, <laughs> golly. I think it's gonna taste good though. If you're up, man. All right, so yeah, we're gonna get started on this risotto. Uh, I'm real excited to bust it out. So we're gonna add the olive oil here. We got the olive oil going. We're gonna wait till it bubbles. Uh, and then we're gonna add some onions and garlic after that. So we, we're just gonna let that thing get nice and saucy. That's, you know, you can feel free to use that. Uh, anytime, uh, anytime I'm in the kitchen, you know, I like to just uh, stir a bit. I didn't have to do that, but I like to, um, stay active. I have ADHD. Uh, so what that means is I've uh, burnt a lot of stuff. Because uh, sometimes, you know, you'll start cooking and you're like, oh, this will take a while. You pull out your phone and then you start looking up like, oh yeah, was the monkeys a band or was it based on a TV show? It's based off a TV show. They weren't a real band. Uh, well, they were a real band, but the TV show came first. You feel me? Without the Beatles, the monkeys wouldn't exist. I mean, because it's kind of an American parody. Uh, if you seen that movie yesterday, you'd get it. Um, I don't know where Oasis uh, comes into that whole thing, but I just kind of chalk that up to white people stuff. All right, let's add some of the, oh, okay. You know, it's not sizzling like I thought it would, which means I might have did it too early, but it's all good, you know? I got tickets to the Beyonce concert. I feel very good about that. Like, you know, I, I didn't get as close as I wanted to because I wanted her to sweat on me. Because uh, I feel like if you get Beyonce sweat on a shirt, you can sell that. Yeah, just give me a second. I'm gonna wait till these sizzle. Uh, this is all part of the, the plan, uh, but just stay right there. We're gonna get this sizzling. All right, then we're gonna add some rice. Continue to stir, let that get nice and cooked up. That's the fun thing about this dish is, you know, we're making stuff a little al dente, you know? Uh, that's um, Italian for hard. Oh, now this looks good. Uh, I was about to say, I wish you could see it, but you can. Uh, <laughs> Like this is this is starting to come together, it's starting to be a dish. So next up, let's go ahead and add some of this wine, yeah. See, now we're talking, you see, if you're talking about aromatics, this is it right here. I'm talking about some amass level aromatics. I'm talking about some boy smells level aromatics. Uh, once again, sponsors, uh, go ahead, uh, hit Josh up. Uh, I'll take 10% off the top. This is when the labor of love starts. So risotto, this is the biggest pain of it, is there's a process of adding broth, cooking it down. Adding broth, cooking it down. And you know, the the uh, the rice, the, uh, the rice, uh, it, it, you know, sucks it up. And it gets nice and thick and hard. And you wanna get, you know, you want your, you want your, your risotto looking like this, you know? You need that thing popping, you know? Now look, we're gonna ladle some in right here. 
So now this is this is when, and this is the culinary term, this is when the rice is juicy. Uh, and so my favorite thing about risotto is when you ask someone what they think the consistency of it will be, you will always get a different answer. Will I choose the right consistency? We'll see. Look at this, look at this thick rice. See how, see how it's just moving around, just shaking, just looking, just delicious, just coming together with the thickness. <laughs> okay, so you know, the risotto's looking good. So now we need to just get some of this butternut squash. I, you know, have a interesting way to peel a butternut squash and that's by using my hands like this with determination. All right, so I'm using the spoon now, I gave up. Uh, all right, now this is busting in my hand because I'm too strong. What if I go just too hard, rip the skin off a little bit and see how that works? You know, cause I, you know, there's a lot of nutrients in the skin. So why would I rob you of that? You know, so you definitely want a little bit of skin in there. And we're gonna mash it in the bowl. This is a, a very great way to mash. You know, you, you, like some of you might be like, I've seen, uh, I've, I've seen the chefs on this channel mash it differently. Okay, that's nice. But I'm showing you new stuff. Do you want to watch the same type of mashing every time you come to the channel, or do you want my new creative way? So we're gonna scoop that and plop that in there. Uh, another culinary term you can add to your vocabulary if you want. You gotta, you just gotta plop it in there and then we're gonna go ahead and put some butter and now we're just gonna let it rock. Here we go, yes, yes, yes. I gotta say, I'm gonna be honest with you. Right now, I didn't believe in myself when I was mashing those uh, butternut squat. I was like, I've ruined it. It's not coming together. But my hands, they kept working, you know? I don't know if you've ever seen that picture of the two men mining for diamonds and one put the pickaxe over his shoulder walking away he's just two picks away from the diamonds the other one he's picking real fast like a maniac his mouth is open and he's picking at high speeds and he's ready to find it that's the difference right there sometimes you just got to let your hands do the work even when your mind's telling you no so we're gonna go ahead and add some more butter to it I, want, I, I like a nice buttery. I, I work on the, you know, Paula Dean scale of butter, you know, rest in peace. I mean, she's still alive. She's just canceled. Uh, <laughs> let it, let it, uh, let it get a little thicker. Cause you know, it, it needs to be a little firm. You don't want that. You know, that's that, that was me being risotto on your plate, moving around too much. You wanted to be there looking you in the face and saying, eat me, eat me. Go ahead and dip your spoon in me. I'm al dente. The crazy part about plating is sometimes if you do it wrong, see? See how it's trying to drop? I got it. There's a lot of brim on this plate, you know? <laughs> you know, this is inspired too because I wanted to remind you when people were wearing beanies with the brim. That was nuts. So hopefully when you think of how nuts that was, you'll think about the butter nuts in the risotto. Oh, this looks gorgeous. Yes. See, sometimes as if you think that you don't cook well, consider that you might have bad plates uh, and, you, and that's gonna be what you need. So I want it to kind of bust out like a little mountain of flavor, but we don't want too much. We, we have a clear situation here. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get a nice little squeeze. Okay, I got more brim than uh, risotto on that squeeze, but we're gonna wipe it off. That's the most important part. And then we're gonna get a little pinch of salt right there. Ooh, that's gonna make those flavors pop. And see, we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of this uh, cheese, yeah. Um, and we're just gonna let it get on top. You wanna serve the, the base of the cheese? Okay. <laughs> All right, you know, we, we, we got some, some cheese connoisseurs in here. But you know, here's a little cooking tip. Sometimes I like to do the back because that gives you a different kind of flavor. Uh, and we're gonna shave this truffle over the top. Yep, yep, there we go. So I gotta be careful because I'm a truffle hound or a truffle hog. And I will add too much truffle because I like it. A lot of people don't, but you know, <laughs> people be wrong. I'm gonna get paper towel. Hey, I'm still here, I'm just off camera. Now I'm back. We're just gonna wipe down that for the presentation. Yeah, I wish you could smell it. See, Elon Musk buying Twitter, but not making something where you can smell food on cooking YouTube videos. 
waste of money. All right, baby, here it is. We did it. Let's see if I can fool somebody. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I'm the other real chef and I am making a lobster chowder risotto. You know, a lot of people look at me and think my culture is fried rice and egg rolls, but in actuality, I was adopted from Maine, uh, raised, I was not adopted from Maine, I was adopted from Vietnam and raised in Maine. And my culture is more like Bud Light, whoopie pies and chowder. So that's what we're making today. I'm gonna start with this really sweet Maine lobster here and start chopping it up. But yeah, I don't really consider myself a professional chef more like a professional cook because I do get paid to cook, but I do consider a chef somebody who knows the balance of uh, creativity and execution. So if you if you have a cool idea, cool idea like squid ink risotto, you have to be able to execute it. And if anyone plans on making that today, I just don't think they can. So. I grew up um, on lobster. My family are fishermen. My brother probably caught this lobster, who knows? Um, and it's just something that I used to eat growing up. We would actually, my dad would actually come home and bring live lobsters and we would race them next to each other to see who won and then we would put them in the pot, so <laughs> yeah. That's a true story. Okay, I'm putting this in some warm butter and this is gonna gently warm up. So we have this par-cooked risotto here. It has some bacon, onion, garlic um, in it and I deglaze it with Bud Light, but I am gonna add a little more Bud Light because it is like the LaCroix of the main community. <laughs> you know, a lot of people think that I grew up on Sam Adams, well, not grow up on Sam Adams because I didn't drink when I was a little kid, but it's Bud Light. So if you're going to Maine, you're gonna have a can of Bud Light so we're stirring this up here. We're probably not gonna cook out all the alcohol, but that's okay. Um, one thing also about being a chef is understanding the business side. So utilizing all your ingredients is extremely important. Um, in this case, I showcase, I have proof that I made a homemade lobster sock. This is a lobster head in here and it just smells so good. But utilizing like all your ingredients down to the shells, down to the corn cobs. I have a nice corn garnish that I'm gonna show you a little bit later, but I save these cobs and soak them in this cream that I'm gonna mount in here in a little bit. I'm gonna let that Bud Light cook off and now I am adding my stock and stirring it until it becomes nice and creamy. Okay, this is coming together really nicely. Gonna keep adding in the stock here and spilling it all over the place. It's okay. I'm not in a kitchen. I don't have PTSD from working in a kitchen. <laughs> okay, so this is coming together really nicely. Also with risotto, you wanna make it a little wetter than normal because it thickens up as it sits out. So I'm gonna add in this nice corn cream that I made and stir it up like this. Oh yeah, that's looking really good. Okay, when we get back, I'm going to plate this up and magic reset. So we are plating up this risotto. I have these homemade potato chips that I made. Um, potato chips are not usually in a chowder, but potatoes are. And if it's a good chowder, you only have like the tiniest amount and then mostly like protein, whatever your protein is. In this case, it's lobster. So we're gonna do that. We have some bacon bits. I'm gonna do a little lemon zest, little flowers over here, cause you eat with your eyes. I have some tarragon, which pairs really nicely with lobster and a wedge of parm to grate over. So we're gonna first First, grate this parm wedge over. It's just gonna add a nice like little umami salt to the top. And then I'm gonna add in my lobster. Okay, is it more fun? Is it more fun if I sing it? Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this lobster on the risotto and plate it up. Plate it up real nice. I'm gonna put this lobster, oh no, this lobster has a poop in it. <laughs> gonna put that one on the side. Got a claw, I got a claw over here. Oh yeah, one for me. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm gonna add a little potato chip, a little bacon bits, never hurt no one. A little lemon zest. Little lemon zest, shake it, tarragon. It pairs well. Oh, the flowers, I forgot the flowers on here. 
Now it's done. A little plate wipe, because I'm a Michelin star chef. <laughs> and here you go. A nice lobster chowder risotto. Jordan from Spork.com, our esteemed judge. Before you are three bowls of risotto, or as the Italians would say, risotti in plural form. One was cooked by an imposter chef, two by very, very professional mythical chefs. Your job is to ascertain the difference between them. Great. I'm gonna start with this one first because this, I'm guessing, has maybe the strongest flavor. So I'm gonna do it last. Um, this is beautiful. This is what, can the camera see that? The camera saw this already, right? Yeah, of course, <laughs> it's a show. Um, this is so beautiful. I love lobster, I love corn. Um, this does feel a little maybe out of season, but who, who am I to say? Mm. Oh my God. We got like little fingerling potato chips on top. The corn is nice. The lobster is cooked to perfection. It is so tender. Ooh, there's like a little bit of bacon. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Speaking of bacon, we have an article on spork.com about the best bacon, so check that out. And the risotto is like nice and creamy. Let me try the risotto by itself. I mean, delicious. The lemon zest really brightens it up. It's very good. And it's also so aesthetically pleasing have to actively make myself stop eating that. Um, I hate this bowl. This is um, terrible. It makes me feel like I'm supposed to like rest on it and eat this like a dog. I don't know really what this is for because this is what happens with this. You pick it up, something spills. Oh, now it's like spilled on the side of the plate and then this looks, I just don't, I don't get it. Um, but I do feel like a chef would do something stupid like this and I do love I mean, there's a lot of truffles on this, but I think that could also be a decoy, you know? Like people who think of fancy food that maybe aren't chefs think, oh, put a lot of truffles on something, it's fancy. Mm. Oh, yum. I mean, the truffles are delicious. It's like a little tangy in a way that I think is too tangy. It looks like butternut squash risotto with truffles on it. It almost tastes like maybe there's a little ketchup in it. It's so tangy. Interesting. I don't know if a chef made that. Last but not least, I'm assuming this is squid ink risotto with calamari on top. I'm not a big squid ink fan in general. I think it can be a little overpowering, but let's see. What is this, saffron? Is there $8,000 worth of saffron on top of this? Oh, that's actually nice. Ooh, really bright. There's like little segments of lemon on top that are really nice. Let's try a piece of this calamari. Really nicely cooked, really tender. This is very delicious. This is very subtle, which is shocking. It's the opposite of what I thought at the beginning. So egg on my face. <laughs> All right, I think I know which one is not made by a professional chef. Jordan, on a three, two, one, you will put your hand over the dish that was not made by a professional chef. Great. In three, two, one. Hey, that is correct. Jordan, meet your imposter chef. We have Ify anyway. Don't hide me. Hi. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> This is awkward because we, we're friends. So okay. um, this wasn't, it's not bad. Is there ketchup in it? No. Okay, what's in it? It's, I think it's the little bit of lemon. Okay. Mm. Yeah, Jordan, maybe your palate's just bad. You ever think about that? <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe my palate's not just not bad. Anything. Yeah. Maybe oh. I'm this beautiful and I have a bad palate. <laughs> Jordan, th thank you so much. Ify, I thought you absolutely crushed it. Fantastic job. Tell the people where they can find you. Oh yeah, uh, Ify Wadiway, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, watch Grand Crew on Fridays. Yeah, uh, and Lily, um, you gotta be like a little bit worse of a cook. I'm sorry, I'm just- You made this. I made that one. This is unbelievable. Thank this you so is much, so Jordan. Sick your palate is amazing. I love you your palate. This. It's so good. Yeah, thank you. Podcasts, they're not just for your ears anymore. Check out new videos of our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, every Friday on youtube.com slash at a hot dog is a sandwich.